Turn it over to Nick. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. So, can uh, Tom, can you hit the light? Do I need mic? Yeah, I think you might. I can definitely talk really loud. I'm a high school basketball coach. Garden pruners and scissors. One side is flat and one side has an angle on it. That is not the same as your kitchen knife or your pocket knife. That's called a Scandi grind or a Scandinavian tip. That's what that's called. This is called a chisel tip because it's flat on one side and on the other. So you would sharpen this very specifically. You flatten the back and then you turn it over and then you put the angle on the top. That is how your pruners have to be sharpened as well unless they are anvils. So you're gonna take, you'll take this off. I like this design because it has one nut, just uh, one screw, one nut comes off right there. Everybody has a pair of these, right? Yes. Okay, these, if you notice, they have two different ways. They come apart two different ways. So you have a nut here and a screw here, and this actually screw is actually crazy because it's Phillips head on both sides. So imagine what that, put it in a vise maybe, and then put screws on each, uh, the screwdrivers on each side. These are um, cheap, and that's probably why most of us have them, but uh, durability long term what happens to these is you find that when you cut something that it splits them apart because they're not actually strong enough and they actually have that flex in them the reason for that you'll realize when you take them apart is because there is a uh, plastic nylon washer in there that provides the correct spacing for them to line up that washer if you put it on in, uh, upside down or as it gets older and it wears they'll cause them to no longer be strong enough to actually go through and cut what you need now these are repairable and you can use these for a while but on this type, when, after you unscrew it, you're going to need to treat this like a chisel because it doesn't have two tips. It has one bevel flat on the back. You're gonna flatten the back, put the bevel on, put this guy back together, and this will live longer than all of us. Any questions about that? All good? Can I ask a question? Yeah. You can, and that's where we're going with this guy. Have you guys seen these little cheaters? Um, these virtually have no purpose in reality. Um, it's possible that you could tune up something with it. And if you were to open this guy up all the way, you're not really going to be, to be able to get down in there. The angle is what's important on this. And we're trying to stay at a high level because as soon as you zoom in, you're gonna make a couple people really happy and then everyone else is gonna tune out. So we're gonna try to stay at a high level here. but. You're not able to get all the way back to the to the end of it, and so thus you're changing angles on different parts of it. If you have damage to it, like if it's chipped or chunked, you're going to have to take it down a long ways anyway, so you might as well take it apart. If you're just tuning it up, you can maybe get away. It's like a lot of things. You can get away with doing it once or twice, but down eventually you're going to end up causing a bigger problem down the road. So I recommend just taking them apart. It's not a big deal. Most of these projects are five-minute projects, like the five-minute craft videos. It's like you're going to these mushrooms five minutes. No big deal. <laughs> Just no big deal at all. In five minutes, you got to... Yeah. Okay, so um, again, flatten the back. Now, let's also consider the geometry here. Do you guys see where the two pieces of metal, inter they touch and they interfere with each other? If you flatten here and you don't flatten here, what are you doing to that angle? Correct. So then they're no longer going to intersect with each other properly. So you have to flatten the entire back from where they touch each other, because if not, you're building in space in there, and that's not gonna help you have a nice clean cut down the road. Something people don't really think about, but that's kind of part of the deal. So let's go back to our hands like this, and we have this, and we run this across a chisel tip. What does this have on it? Two angles. What does this have on it? One angle. One angle. Uh, I mean, it's not like the end of the world, but like you're kind of doing damage that's going to cost you a lot of time with a flat, with a with a stone later, if you use this on this. Does that make sense? Now, if you have, oh, I don't have any anvils. See, I didn't even bring a pair of anvils to show you. There is a pair of anvils that's similar to this, and it's got the you know the blade that goes into it. This would work on an anvil because an anvil has a Scandinavian grind on the end of it, where you have two points coming together like a knife. So this would technically work on an anvil if you're able to keep it. Um, ju I just brought these to show you. These are, you know, well, like 99 cent 
pruners or whatever. Um, the reason that lots of these like this um, get purchased is because people leave and lose and don't take care of them. And they're like, I need a five ninety nine pair of pruners. I'm checking out at Home Depot and. These are not made of metal that will take an edge over and over and over again. Sometimes they don't temper them at all, which I found. Um, and sometimes they'll only temper part of it. So you may get one sharpen out of it and then it's not gonna hold an edge anymore because it's no longer hardened steel that can even hold an edge. Also, the mechanisms that these things go together are all plastic and all of those is gonna create, you know, a way that like, see this one's not even gonna lock anymore. Oh, there it goes unreliable right with the plastic so just get something and take care of it. that's the uh, point on that these are super duper sharp i also noticed that the way that these come together they actually are leaving the tip exposed right there and if this was plastic there'd be no way to fix that but all i need to do here is i need to change so i just need to bend this guy down a little bit so that it catches at a different spot to hold that close Does that makes sense if it's all made out of metal it's easy to fix them too Okay, any questions on that? Same exact is true for um, clippers, or what do we call these, like hedge trimmers? This one is actually serrated, so you'll find that um, different blades have different textures on them. I try to stay away from serrated stuff because it's a mess to sharpen. The average person cannot sharpen serrated things. Um, now, if you want to, you can get crazy and remove the serrations. <laughs> Um, just how much time you want to spend on a grinding wheel is up to you, um, but you can, but this is the same. So we, now we know the geometry here of how these go together, flat in the back, angle on the front. That's the same for your scissors. So we have a flat back, angle front, we have a flat back and an angle front. This is really more pronounced like a pair of scissors. Make sense? Well, let's keep going. Okay. Loppers? Yeah. Okay. Um, I used these the other day and I realized when I was putting them in my box that I have some pretty significant damage. Now, this is a decent brand, right? You guys have seen Fisker. This is a decent pair. You would expect these to maybe be a little more durable than they actually are. Um, I won't be buying this again because I just sharpened them and there's like chunks missing out of my blade. So this is going to take more than a five minute project to fix. I'm going to have to remove quite a bit of metal on the back and I'm going to have to put a pretty deep, I'm gonna to have to remove metal again to get this bevel in here where, where I can get an edge all the way through. So when you're looking at these, um, what is this? You guys heard the saying, buy once, cry once, right? Like that's kind of how, kind of how that works. These are exactly the same geometry as the pruner. So you're gonna treat them exactly the same way. Okay, this is, I don't, this is my favorite weeding tool. Have you guys seen one of these? So, um, like around stuff, very handy. And this is, this is literally a knife on a stick. It's very sharp. I definitely cut myself a couple times on it. And it is, uh, the geometry of this one is interesting as well. Uh, it is more like a chisel than a knife. I mean, of course you could go back and put a bevel on the other side of it, but it is flat on the back. We have actually two bevels. We have a primary bevel and then we have the bevel on the end. So two angles there. Typically you're not gonna mess with the big bevel. You're only gonna put on there. So when we take our stone, we're going to run this across our stone, make sure that we're matching that angle so that we're imparting the same angle that, that's already on there. You can measure this out and you can make it on your own. If you wanna change the angle, you sure can. Just match what they already did. The engineers there would be proud of you for matching that. So depending on the types of stones you have, you're going to either use water or you're going to use oil. If you have WD-40, totally fine, use WD-40. I like Ballastol. Uh, I use Ballastol on, pretty much use this instead of WD-40, but I like Ballastol because um, you can use it on a whole bunch of stuff. It says firearms on there as well. So, you can use it on all sorts of stuff, but if you don't have one of these, pick these up. I think I paid like $30 on Amazon. That was before coronavirus, so maybe it's like $60 now. I don't know. I weed around um, in my raised beds, weeding through my mulch, because I can just put it under the mulch, and I can just go around and weed. So, also, I let some grass grow around my fig trees, and I've been getting pretty aggressive with that guy. 
try to swing it a couple times. Yeah. Can you tell me what that's actually called? Besides the knife on the It's a Japanese yeah. word and it starts with an N. Hayachi. It's Okay. I think it's called a, something that starts with an N. I don't know, we can Google it. Okay. I'm just wondering. Yeah, I, I bought it on Amazon. So it's a Japanese weeding tool. Yeah. Okay. Can, <laughs> yes. You can start there. Okay. Um, let's talk about wood. I'm sorry. Yeah. You, you mentioned using the liquid with the stone. Yeah. I didn't know there was, that was involved. And so just a tiny bit. So we're gonna. Uh, you can go as far into that as you would like, because there's a ton of different ways to do that. If you have a wet stone, you're gonna need to soak it in water. If you have a stone that's made out of it, I know it goes. How do you find out, like, if you inherited a stack from your grandfather? Oh, you can send me a picture of it, and I can tell you what it is. <laughs> um, there's, it's, it's just like anything. You can go as far down into that as you want. Um, you're not going to ruin anything, though. That's the part that, like, you're not going to ruin anything. Spray the thing down with WD-40 and sharpen it. You're going to be fine. Like, don't post that on YouTube because they will roast you in the comments. But, <laughs> like, if you do it in your, you know, in your garage, no one will know. It'll be fine. It's not going to hurt anything. You just may not have the most efficient setup, right? But if you're just putting a bl an edge on something, you can use water or WD-40 or sewing machine oil. All that light machine oil is pretty much all the same. Yeah. But uh, the wet stones, you'll know if it's a wet stone because you probably bought it to like sharpen your kitchen knives. Those get soaked. And when you put them in water, they actually bubble and you can see all the air coming out of that stone. So like this one right here is a, those are like more of a natural and these are, oh gosh, I forgot what they're called. What they're called. These are, Is it one from Arkansas? No, those are natural ones. The Arkansas stones are natural because they actually cut those out. This is a man-made, can't think of what it's called. This one would be one that you would use oil on. Um, I tried it with water, it works okay. It works better with oil, but it has a coarse on the fine. Um, let's see, we were going to wood care, right? Is that what I said? Okay, the very first thing when you buy a garden tool is going to have shiny, beautiful surface on it. You buy it off the shelf of the garden store and it's got this, and you're thinking, man, this thing is protected. First thing you wanna do is get that off. <laughs> Scratch that off. Use a pocket knife and just go at an angle where you're straight on it, like this right here, and just scrape all that junk off. Scrape it all off. That is um, not, it's gonna cause blisters on your hands and it's not actually gonna protect long-term for the, for the wood. We want to put an oil on the wood, not a shellac or finish or lacquer, whatever they have on there. Remove it immediately. You can use sandpaper if you don't have a knife or you don't want to use a knife. You can just, it takes longer, but you can use sandpaper and remove all of that finish. Now this shovel is very old. I believe it's over 40 years old and I have restored it just one time and that was like three or four years ago. And I do use it, but it's so nice that I like to use it for presentations. <laughs> now, the other one that I restored, I don't use. I definitely have it hanging in the garage. But this one, you can tell it does have some scratches and stuff. But let's talk about wood care first, and then we'll talk about um, what we can do to some of the handle, to some of the uh, on the edges down there. So, if you're, you guys, have you felt one that has a, um, like it has ridges on it because it's been sitting outside? So, wood is. Um, what is a natural and it's alive and it has oils in it. And when those oils go away, it's replaced by different things that are in there and it dries out and it cracks and shrinks, which is why you see, like you guys know what I'm talking about, that's why you see the way wood acts at different times. So first thing you need to do, if you have one that's been outside, you're gonna to wanna to sand that off. You can get aggressive with that. Um, you can use a machine or you can just get a piece of sandpaper and do it by yourself with, with your hands. So once you've got it down, to where it is smooth again, where you can actually use it and not cut yourself up. Um, you can get some boiled linseed oil, which I have some here. This is the cheap stuff, boiled linseed oil. And this stuff has a drying agent in it um, that some people don't like. If, you're, um, if you don't like the toxins and things like that, stay away from the one that has a drying agent. You get double boiled very natural product, and you can use that on your hands. They say not to put this on your hands, but sometimes I put it on my hands. That explains a lot. Yes. <laughs> Soak it right up. So if you have one that you pulled out of the backyard and you're trying to fix it up, you're gonna sand it down, right? Now, if you bought one from a store, you're gonna sand it down. 
you're gonna get the shellac off and then we're gonna put the boiled linseed on. And that's just actually, it looks like it's been stained. This has not been stained. This is just how it comes out with the boiled linseed oil. So there's a little saying, so I'll make sure I get it correct. So you've got one that you've, you're restoring or brand new, same position. We've got it down to bare wood. You're gonna put once a day for a week. This is how we rehydrate it, right? So we're gonna fully root once a day for a week. Now this is, the first time it's gonna soak it up. By the time you get to it tomorrow, it's just wipe it off. You can actually, the boiled linseed will stay on that rag and you probably don't even need any more. You can just wipe it again. So we're gonna wipe it every day for a week. This is a restoration situation, right? Because we've got damage and we're trying to save this handle so we don't have to replace it. Then you're gonna do it once a week for a month. Then you're gonna do it once a month for a year. Now, this is best case scenario. If you skip some, no big deal, <laughs> right? So if you get stuck and you forget about it for six months, that's fine. After that though, you're gonna to wanna to hit all of your wooden handles um, annually. If you do it annually, then you won't have the situation where it's drying out. But you leave this out, I mean, you leave this out like as beautiful and restored as this one is. If I left it out for a couple of weeks in this heat and the sun, it's not gonna be pretty anymore. And it's gonna to need to be completely rehydrated. Make sure you pay attention to the ends. The ends dry out first. So if you notice like on a piece of wood, it checks and splits, where does it come from first? On the ends, because that's where it dries out first. Any questions about wood handles? I gravitate to tools that have wood handles. Like if you're buying a trowel or whatever, I usually pick one with a wood handle because I know that I can do something to it if it gets whatever. And plus if it, um, when they're oiled, they clean up way easier. Like you can get muddy and whatever. And when they're properly oiled, they actually clean up. They just hose off, they wipe it off and you're good. So let's talk about the, um, let's talk about the shovels. So this is the same for like uh, trowels, spades, shovels, whatever. I've been experimenting with doing the bubbles on there. I had never considered that until people were talking about it in my, um, in my, what's the, the, in the, when I was an intern year, when I was going to the, the 70 hours, I heard people talking about it, so I tried it. And so I have a filed edge around here, and I've only used it on this shovel a couple times, but on my hand trowel, I started putting an angle on those, and I actually very much like that. Uh, so I'm right-handed, so I put it on the left side only. I left this side and I put it here, so when I'm digging my holes for planting different things or whatever. I, I like that. I also, it actually makes it into a bit of a weeder as well, which I didn't expect for it to be that good at that. But um, sanded all of the rust and everything off of this. And then I put a tape line so I could paint it. The paint is for two reasons. One, I think it looks cool. But the other one is paint. The main reason we paint things is to protect them from rusting. I completely sanded all of the rust down to bare metal. So you have to keep it super duper oiled or it's gonna rust or you can paint it. So I chose to paint it and then I only have to touch up the exposed metal down here. Questions about that? Yes. The Walmart, Rustolia do better. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Spray paint. And um, I had this handle taken off when I spray painted it, but it's no big deal to just put a piece of tape right there. And you can also put, you know, put some little stripes up here tape off little sections, spray all that, and then you got yourself some little fancy stripes, and then when you're at the garden tour work day, there'll be no mistaking, <laughs> that is my shovel, don't even touch it. Yes. yes. So you're, you're rehabbing the handle, but the wood part that's in the metal, you have to take the whole thing apart? You would if you're, if you have like, if you feel like it's gonna crack and like you really need to get in there. Some of this is exposed right here, yeah. and you could 100% just pour oil down in there until it's not taken anymore. Um, but yeah, right in through here, you're not gonna get there. And these, these like this are, I mean, this isn't a casual job. You would have to grind this off, knock that pin out, and then you're gonna have to re-brad a new pin in there, um, which is just, you know, hammering over an anvil or something. I, this is, I bought this pin on Amazon and put the new pin back in it. But I took the whole thing out and got all of that soaked in the oil when I did the restore on this one. But yeah. I must have missed something. How did you sharpen it? Oh, exactly. files, files. The cool thing about this is a lot of the stuff you probably already have in the garage. Like you probably have one of these in the garage. Um, this one is a very fine file. So this would be like for an ax. I wouldn't use this on a shovel, but again, we'll stay at high level and not get into the weeds on that. Um, also, if someone's gonna watch you file, 100% only file in one direction, um, <laughs> because files are made to cut in one direction. And if someone is watching you, you want it to look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> and if you, even if you lightly drag it like backwards and it just barely even touches it, 
It's a big no-no. But if you do it by yourself in your garage, whatever you want. <laughs> do, do you have a question? Yeah. Oh, uh, the rust. Oh, rust. Okay. So hit it with um, hit it with sandpaper. Hit it with a flat disc. Hit it with wire wheel. All sorts of different ways to get all the rust off. If it's really bad, you can even dip it in like some of the rusties and things like that. But once you've got it down to bare metal, oil it quickly because it'll rust in like an hour. You'll see surface rust forming almost immediately. So uh, when you're washing your tools, dry them as well and then hit them with some spray. Yeah. Do you ever use a bench grinder? I do. <laughs> yes. Um, let's see. What would I use one for for these? Okay. So I actually was in a hurry and it was set up with a fine stone, which my bench grinder normally doesn't have a fine stone on it. And I did sharpen this one time on the bench grinder. And it was actually quite complicated because of this angle here and then I'm hitting my bench because um, mine's not on a pedestal, but I did sharpen this with the bench grinder. Um, you can, again, if no one's watching, you can sharpen chisels with bench grinder, but there are people that would offend some parts of the country if you were to sharpen a chisel with a bench grinder. Yeah. The oil that you use on the shovel. Let me say it again. Yes. You can use tongue oil. And if you get the double bin, double boiled linseed oil, it is sticky. And that's that's the reason why they put the drying agent in those. If you don't, the tongue oil will work just fine, but it's sticky and gummy. So, yeah. Um, what are, uh, is it possible to sharpen a pruning saw, one of those nice serrated pruning saws for tree, tree pruning? It is. <laughs> um, you're gonna need some specific tools for that. And you're also gonna need to know like, um, if it's already been ground all the way down and it's like virtually ruined, it would be hard to figure out what angle they want that for the offset, but it is possible. Um, those little teeth in there are carbide and they're, as long as the teeth haven't come off, you can re-angle and refile carbide. Are there places that do that? See, that's the problem. If you're not DIYing it, when you pay someone to do it, that's why people buy new ones. And that's why we ended up with these plastic things. But, this is a nice, expensive one I want as a door oh, How big is it? About like that. Oh. And what brand is it? It's um, a Japanese one. I forget. Hmm, that sounds interesting. That sounds <laughs> like I might want to make a YouTube video on that. <laughs> it's um, very expensive. It was like an $80 yeah. uh, tree saw. So um, there's a couple of, is it folding? Does it fold open? No. Oh, okay. I have a couple that fold open that I like and I, Knock the tooth off of one, and there's nothing you can do about that unless you want to. I mean, that's real zoom in to get to that stuff. But you can go through and put a file on there. The, the problem is you're going to need a small file, and you're going to need a fine file. So. And there's like a hundred teeth on it, though, right? Yeah. No, that's a. That is going to. I mean, it's going to take you half an hour for sure. It'll take you half an hour once you get set up and you got the tools. I know. I think it's driving it But it might sound like something I might want to make a YouTube video on. It's Nick Farrow's at Yahoo.com. And if I make a YouTube video on it, I don't charge. It's free because YouTube will pay. There's your offer right there. Take it up on it. Another question over here? Yes. Um, it is flammable. Yes. Um, 100%, uh, you should wear gloves and eye protection and masks. And do it in a well-ventilated area. You should do all of those things. And what do you do afterwards? I actually have a, that's a good question. I have a metal container for boiled linseed oil that I put the rag back in and I close it. And I have a metal container for ballastol. And I put the rag back in it and I reuse that rag until it's gross. And then I throw it away. How do you dispose of it? Mm -hmm. How do you just waste? Put it in a coffee can jug with water. Yeah, you do that. To build vapors. Put it in a, what about like in a Ziploc baggie and fill it with water? Yeah. yeah. Put it, you don't want it seal it up, music. fill it away. Can I leave Lindsay's oil rags in a box? It will spontaneously combust and your house will burn down. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just linseed oil, it's all petroleum oil. You cannot throw a rag in a corner in your garage. It will start a fire by itself. That's interesting. I 100% have one in a metal container right now. And it may or may not be close to some. 
other things. Electricity. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And it says right on there, only use on right-handed tools. And then apparently they make one for Should have brought one. I have one. Um, I have one, and it is a single side of this. So it is a, it's like a long stick, and it has one piece of a carbide, a carbide tool on there that you're supposed to just stroke across the blade. So if you had your Corona brand and your Corona brand, and you would just go through and you would just stroke across that angle and you're just gonna almost like you're peeling an apple just slice 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 and then you'll be able to refine that finish if if it's damaged you're gonna have to go deeper but if we're just tuning it up and these sharpening i like those i've used it i've used that on this pair in fact perfect yes Um, it's metal and it's doable, but all of that would have to come apart. Um, I had a real mower in my garage that my neighbor gave me for like a year and I kept over and over, I was like, I'm gonna do this and I never did it and I gave it back to him. But it's possible and you could probably do, it, it probably doesn't have much damage because those kind of just got quit being used and it wasn't like, it was like it was working just fine and then they bought a gas mower. Like, and there was nothing wrong with it. They just kept it, and then now it's available for us to restore. But there's probably nothing wrong with it. It probably just needs refinished on those edges. But. Okay, send me a video. Anybody else? Okay, last thing. These right here are great. Um, they mold to the shape of like a wooden handle. So it, they see how they just kind of mold to it. And you can use this on this. This is for wood. You're gonna usually be like, I mean, you can go to as much as you want to sanding wood, but most people are gonna be in like the 150 to 200 range. You can go coarser if you really need to, like I got this sticker that you can see remnant on there. I need to be a little more aggressive and get that off. But up to 200s, I mean, you wanna go 400 grit, that's fine, you'll have a really smooth finish. On metal though, you need a much higher number. So if you're going to use sandpaper on metal to like remove rust, you're probably going to want to do like a 400. This is 600. And sometimes they call this wet and dry because you actually may want to wet this so that you're um, getting a nice smooth polish on there. But you can get this wet and you can remove all of your rust on here or on shovel. Um, but there is a difference in the sandpaper. You can't, not all sandpaper is the same. You gotta pay attention to that number. If you get confused, you know me, I'll help you. Um, so that's a wood sandpaper, but it's a four or six hundred? This is metal, okay. and it's a 600. I mean, you could use it on wood, uh, I would imagine, but it's, it's more designed for a wet dry for metal. Um, the last time I used this, I put it on a piece of glass, I got it all wet, and I stuffed it down, and you can see my little circles right there. I took the um, hair clippers, uh, the wall trimmers, because I, I cut my little boy's hair. I took them apart, and I lapped it using the 600 grit. And then I went to 2,000 after that, but I used 600 first. <laughs> I have 10,000. You can go as far. You can go as far as you want. You can make it sharper. After after like 1,000 or 2,000, you're no longer really removing metal. You're really just polishing at that point. So if you can think about how I'm removing metal with those large numbers, think about like 68 grit sandpaper. Like you can see the sandpaper nuggets on there. And then when you get down to those finer ones, like this one, you would not be able to see a 600 grit. You can feel it but you can't see it because they're real small. And then it goes from there. Any other questions? Oh, boy. So we can go as far as you want. I, a couple of years ago, I did do an actual class where you brought your stuff and I told you what to buy and I showed you how to use a stone and we had a good time. Was anyone there? Whose house was that at? Oh, I was in Tammy's. Yeah, so it was at Tammy's house, that's right, in like Argyle or something. Wherever she was. Then, yeah. So if we want to do something like that again, I'm 100% game for it. Um, but otherwise, if you want to come ask me a question. Oh, you know what? I want to show you guys this. When I was, when I, in, in 19, when I was a master gardener, I was like, I want a pair of real leather gloves. And so I bought a pair of leather gloves and I realized leather gloves are terrible. They're not comfortable. And then I watched, um, I found somebody on YouTube who said, 
you guys may be seeing this, turn your leather gloves inside out. Okay, so now if you think about it, the seams are on the outside and they're not poking you all the way around. And the dexterity that you gain back by having the seams on the outside versus the seams actually touching the end of your finger, it's really a silly design if you think about it. Turn them inside out. So I turned mine inside out and then I put the leather glove conditioner on the inside and the outside of this. And these gloves fit like a glove. And I got my name rolled up right there because, because I put it on the other side. But these have been cleaned and refinished and I've been using them since 2019 and they look brand new. In fact, you would probably say I don't use them. I use them a couple times a month for sure. I don't use them all the time. I don't, I'm not a construction worker or anything. But I use them all the time, but turn your gloves inside out. And I found this in 2019 and so this is what, like a five year Five year status update for you. The gloves are still going strong. They live on the workbench and I use them all the time. So. You have the green bar in your yard here? Um, oh, I do actually, but just it, as soon as I see it, I go after it. Yeah, they are shred through them. Shred my gloves. All right, thank you guys for hanging out.